Hey y'all, Texas beekeeper here. So, you want to get into beekeeping, huh? Well, I don't blame you. It's a good hobby, relatively inexpensive, as long as you're uh, set on some small goals, like you want six hives or eight hives or 12 hives. You can get there pretty fast, relatively cheap, uh, and it can pay for itself. Uh, when it starts getting expensive is when you don't have a limit, when you just want to keep increasing. You're going to constantly be buying equipment, building equipment, and uh, it'll seem like you can't keep up with the bees. But uh, as long as you have some relatively small goals, uh, it can be it can be a pretty pretty fun hobby, pretty uh, little work, minimal effort, and uh, very rewarding. You can get honey, propolis, pollen. Uh, wax all kinds of resources come from the bees and uh, a lot of it with just honey cells or wax cells propolis cells uh, it can pay for your expansions uh, so I'm gonna go through a few a few uh, things that you need to have when you start <coughs> one of those being hive tools this is a standard j hook hive tool and i like it because you can get under the frames and pick them up you've got this in for scraping wax or cleaning propolis off the frames however this tool i like the j hook a lot better it's a lot narrower as you can see this one is kind of fat this one has to be just perfect you almost have to put it in at a at a uh, perpendicular to the plane and then pull up where this one can more easily get under the frames so you may look at the designs there's nothing wrong with having multiples you're gonna more than likely need them and then this is just a standard hive tool uh, this little hook can pry up frames also from the middle part and it's got the same scraper uh, which this one you see has both it's got that and the J hook so, you know, get yourself several hive tools. They're going to be a must-have, one at least. Uh, another another must-have is going to be a smoker. And this is for smoking your bees. Uh, it gets them to get out of the way. It masks their pheromones. Uh, the bees will set off a, an alarm pheromone uh, when they're startled or angry at you. And that tells the other bees, hey, something's not right. Well, smoking them masks that smell so they can't communicate as easily. And uh, a lot of times it'll seem as if they're calming the bees. Uh, my first tip would be to get calm bees to begin with. Uh, but definitely you're going to want a smoker. And you're going to want a hive tool of some type. For smoker fuel, you can use anything from sticks pine pine needles work really good I used to have a pine tree that provided for the most part plenty of pine needles but it froze in 2021 we had a hard freeze and that killed that tree of all trees the pine tree uh, I found that rather odd but I no longer have it so now I use uh, sticks leaves and uh, the most recent uh, is uh, horse bedding. You can go to Tractor Supply, get a 40 pound bag for, I think it's just under 650. And uh, they're little pellets, and you can put those in your smoker. They're a little harder to light, but once you light them, that's what I have in here right now. Once you light them and you keep uh, your smoker going, that fuel will burn cool. You wanna always test it on your hand, make sure it's not warm to touch because if it's warm to your hand it's going to be hot to the bees but once you get the horse bedding going that thing will last all day and then some i've had it sitting out for a day come out there the next day and it's still smoking uh, if i didn't cap it now usually if i know i'm done i'll just put a cap in and that kind of cuts off the oxygen keeps it from burning 
Uh, so that's a good thing to have also, some sort of plug. This is just a stick, been using it for years. And uh, I just plug the entrance there. Just get one that fits pretty snug and you're good to go. As you can see, this one is lit pretty good, but if I don't keep pumping it, at least for a while, it could die out. But once you do get that horse bedding going, it goes really good. So we've got that, hive tools, a smoker, and then a torch to light your smoker. It's not a necessity, but it does make it a lot easier. And it's just a propane torch. Uh, you know, keeps you from having to deal with the wind as, as much. A lighter is difficult to get down in there. This thing, you just stick it in and turn it on. Uh, get your smoker going really quick. Not a must have. Some form of lighting is, is a must have, but this is definitely one that if you can afford the, I don't know what the, this might have been like 40 or $45 and then the bottles or, you know, prices changed lately, but I'd say somewhere under six to ten dollars uh, and one of these will last you a long time especially if you only have a few hives this thing will last you probably two or three years if you're just lighting it <coughs> excuse me every now and then uh, so some form of lighting your smoker the smoker hive tools uh, you're going to want some form of safety equipment this is probably what i use most often it's just a B-Veil, and it just fits over your head. And it just keeps the bees out of the most sensitive uh, part of your body, which is your face. Uh, bee stings to the nose, lip, eye, they're not pleasant. And this uh, really helps in those times. So definitely get yourself at least a veil. And, uh, Earlier today, I actually misplaced my veil. I didn't know where it was. And so I came out and just inspected. And uh, for the most part, every bee, every hive was perfectly fine uh, until I got to that last one. And it literally was the last one I was gonna do. And I cracked the hood and bees just came at me right into my face. Luckily I had my glasses on. Shouldn't be bad, I'm pretty used to it now. So I shouldn't be swelling much, if, if, if any. Uh, but uh, they, uh, <laughs> they came right after me and uh, I didn't stick around. I took off running towards the house and uh, got inside and you know, killed off what there was. Thankfully, you know, they didn't, you know, they weren't Africanized bees that followed me and hung out waiting for me to come back out. They, uh, you know, a few of them did stick on me and, and follow me, but that was it, you know, got, got rid of them, got my bee suit, came back out and finished up, closed them up and was done. And they actually weren't near as bad the second time, but uh, yeah, something was aggravating them and that happens. You gotta always expect that they may not always be in a good mood. Anything can set them off, but as long as you're prepared with some sort of a protection, here's another nice one. It's just a bee jacket fits over you just like a normal jacket and then you've got the bell that goes over your over your face and zip it all up and you're uh, you're protected that away and then there's also full bee suits they get down you know cover your legs uh, I would probably recommend having all three if you can afford it. If not, this along with uh, jeans and some boots works fine. Uh, you know, you may take some through the through the uh, jeans. This is a vented V suit. It's got three layers of protection, and uh, I find these do a really good job of protecting you from stings. And they also are ventilated, so it's cooler to wear still pretty hot in the Texas heat but this beats getting stung multiple times now for me me personally you use your own judgment but on a normal day if it's a normal hive and they don't sting me or they'll sting me just a little bit I would prefer myself to go without I can see better without the veil I'm cooler without the jacket uh, but I do I do either carry it with me or if I'm at home, I, I know where to go get at least something. 
like I said, I misplaced this one, but I, you know, I did find it, and uh, I got that. But you know, especially if you're just starting out, it's a good idea to, to wear a, a veil and or a bee suit. Uh, so now we've got some protection. Some people may like to wear gloves. Again, I don't wear gloves unless it's just a really hot hive. If they're coming after my hands, that's not pleasant. Uh, but I always give them the chance first. But yeah, if they if they're stinging me like crazy, I'll go put some gloves on. I'll use some cowhide gloves or bee stores sell gloves that slide up and fit up to your arm. You may want to get you a pair of gloves. And I'm not trying to scare anybody because you know normally bees are very docile. You know you can see I'm standing here in front of these hives. They're flying around, which brings me. I said in front. I'm standing here behind the hives. Uh, but that brings me to the next point. You want to stay away from the front of the hive as much as possible because that's their flight path coming in and coming out of their hive. And if you're blocking it, it will it will aggravate them or could aggravate them. And uh, they could bump you or sting you. A lot of times they'll bump you first, letting you know you're in our way. We don't like you here. Please leave. Uh, so just do your inspections from the back or from the side. As you can see here, I can't really get to the side of these very easily, but I'll come to the back side and do my inspections. Uh, so that's always the best place to be is behind the entrance. Um, so now let's get into some uh, other equipment. Hive bodies, you can get a hive body. This is a deep, which is what I run, all deeps. Some people will run mediums and shallows for their supers. And a super is a word for a honey super. That's what they'll stack on top of uh, a deep brood chamber. This is where the bees will have their brood nest, which is all the baby bees, eggs, larvae. Uh, and then above that, they'll put their supers, which is the honey supers, where they'll draw out comb and fill it with nectar. And that's the honey that you get to extract. Me personally, and I'm probably one of the oddballs, so don't feel inclined to follow what I do. This is just the way I do it. I run all deeps. Now, the only reason I run all deeps is because this way I don't have to juggle my frames. I don't have to worry about if I have a good deep frame that I want to move up to the top, and it won't fit if it's a medium super, or it won't fit if it's a shallow super. So with deeps, if I have a deep super, I'll just move my deep frame up into the deep super and I'm I'm fine uh, so that's a, a route that I chose to take uh, some people don't want to deep supers when they're full of honey they get really really heavy and there's alternatives to that you can unload the honey into a deep super that's in a cart you know frame by frame you can put them in there leave your empty box fill it with empty comb or empty frames uh, there's ways around it. You can. Some people have lifts that they'll use to pick them up. Uh, you can do any of that. Just do what works for you. Um, I would probably recommend starting at least with mediums or shallows. See if it's not a big problem. And I'll say that you know, if you're only running a few colonies, it probably makes sense. Uh, then you don't. Sorry for the wind. Then you don't have to worry as much about you know multiple hives that you know that you need to juggle frames between if you only have four two six then it's less of a pain this particular one is a dovetail i made this it's a dovetail joints requires no nails just glue and uh, the dovetail fit i just hammer them together they self uh, square and i'm done very quick assembly i encourage you if you're uh, mechanically inclined uh, you like to do woodworking take a look at my playlist for hive equipment and in there actually the first video i did was building a uh, quick and easy dovetail box and it does require you purchase a dovetail jig or already have a dovetail jig but it is a it, in my opinion it's a really good way to build boxes makes a really high quality box the assembly time is a whole lot quicker than nails and screws 
and I just think it does a better joint. They, if, if you cut them right, which once you have it set up, it's fine. But uh, once you have it set up, it's a beautiful joint, fits together just perfect, and really easy to assemble. So take a look at that playlist. I also have hive bottoms, hive tops, uh, migratory tops, and uh, other various things on putting the handhold slots, some grooves on the inside for dividers. Uh, but once you uh, decide you want to build your own equipment, it's definitely a, a good playlist for you to watch. Uh, so this is that that body. Here I have one that's a box joint or finger joint. This is one I purchased and it uses screws and nails, 11 of them per corner. So that's 44 per box. And I found that that comes out to about $3 a box extra in cost. And I purchased these because I was saving a dollar cheaper than what I could build them for myself and didn't factor in the nails plus the assembly time and ended up spending more money and more time. I really think I could have built them faster and cheaper once I calculated the cost of the screws and nails. But again, use your own use your own judgment, your own opinion. You may not have the capability of making some uh, or finding dovetail ones. In that case, this may be your only option. And it's a perfectly fine option. It doesn't make a bad box. It just, I find these, you have to spend more time putting clamps on them, squaring them up. They're not a perfect fit. Nails and screws in every one of the the uh, joints and it's just time consuming but that's just my opinion something else you'll want to have is some frames there's two options you can get all plastic frames with built-in plastic foundation no assembly required and it just fits down into your box the other alternative is wooden frames you have to assemble them or buy them assembled. That's going to cost you more. Uh, usually you'll want to glue each joint and then staple, nail each joint as well. This will be for if you're running foundationless. You can put a strip of wax or wood at the top to, to lead the bees. Or you can go just 100% foundationless. For that I would recommend having some drawn out combs already or you can also get a plastic foundation to put in. Now these are really easy to install. There's a groove at the bottom. You just slide it in the groove and then pop it right in until it fits in that top groove. And there's your foundation. Now this is plastic. This is plastic. So if you're going this route, there's not much difference between that and this. Plastic frames are a little thinner found that with these you can run a full nine with a one gallon frame feeder this is a one gallon frame feeder fits inside your hive now I've got a brick and some hive tools down here so everything is not fitting perfect but let me get some of that out of the way One gallon frame feeder just slides right in just like a frame and uh, with that with the wood ones I found it's tight too tight to be able to get uh, nine of them in usually I can get eight with this I've heard that if you get the one and a half gallon eight frames fit perfect with the one and a half with uh, a one gallon you can't quite fit nine wooden and then it leaves a pretty big gap with the plastic, I found you can get nine frames easily in and then a one gallon feeder. So just a tip, it's up to you what you want to use. Some people use uh, buckets on top. Some people open feed off, you know, in their apiary somewhere. Uh, there's all different types, Ziploc bags on top of the frames. Uh, just do some research, find out what you think works for you. I really like the frame feeders. 
from what I've seen, they last a long time. They're in your hive, enclosed by the elements. Uh, just last a, last a good long time. This particular one has built-in ladders for the bees to climb down in and a wooden top to cover it to seal it off so they can't get down in the middle. So this is just what works for me and not necessarily what I recommend, but I like it. So I do think you would too. But again, use, use your own judgment there. I'm gonna set this off to the side for just a second. bottom board I made it's got a three-quarter inch uh, lip on the top and then quarter I believe or three-eighths on the bottom I don't use the bottom one but I use the use the top your box fits right on top of that there you go you can slide if you want an entrance reducer in have a lid. Some people like telescoping lids. I particularly like the migratory lid. And I also show how to make I show how to make the bottom board and I also show how to make the migratory lid in my playlist for uh, building hive equipment. This particular lid just fits over the box. It's got a lip on the front and a lip on the back. Each lip overhangs. And then I build in a half inch shim all the way around. It gives them a little extra bee space. And that way you can feed pollen patties on top. Uh, you could put your sugar bags on top if you don't choose to do the frame feeders. It just gives them a little extra space. Now keep in mind that with that extra space, they could draw a comb on top of your frames. They could stick it to the top. And they could also just gather up at the top. The bees like to, to gather at the top and kind of get out of the regular hive. Sometimes you'll crack the lid and it's just full of bees. There's things you can do. You can either take the shim out, don't put it. If you find it's not for you, it's not required. You can also put some of that uh, uh, foam insulation. It's a, not the spray, but it's a, it's a sheet, 16 inches wide comes in rolls of 50 to 100 foot and you can just lay that on the top or lay that here you could even probably cut it to sit inside and that'll protect the bees from you know it's like a radiant barrier or uh, insulation for the winter but it would cool things down in the summer and warm things up in the winter uh, you can always go that route uh, there's other things also like a spacer this you can put on top. It's just, uh, I don't know, inch and a half or so. It's got a little entrance cut into it that the bees can come and go. Um, I don't know if this covers it completely. Looks like it doesn't. So the bees can come and go through there, no problem. This just gives them more space, particularly if you're feeding. Uh, you could put it at the top of honey supers to give them an entrance and an exit to gather honey if you have a queen excluder. Um, not a requirement, but some people like to use that. There's other things you can make, like a uh, screen shim. It's just extra ventilation. It's just an eighth inch hardware cloth. Number eight hardware cloth. And it's just screen all the way around just gives them ventilation i don't have this for many but if i've got a hive that's got a lot of bearding heavy heavy bearding i may put that on uh, at least through the humid hot period to give them a little bit of extra ventilation up top uh, i find that it helps you may want to do it you may not just my opinion that i think it works uh, couple of other things this is a frame holder 
this you can hang off the side of your hive. Let me get rid of this spacer. You just clip this right onto the side. And as you're inspecting, you can hang a frame there. You can hang, mul hang multiple frames there. They just sit there until you're ready to put them back. Keeps them out of the way. And just a, another set of hands, basically. The downside to this I found is that you know, this is a box on top of a box that I'm not, I'm not using this box. If I wanted to put a frame feeder on this box down here, as you can see, it's in the way. This hive is in the way, so I can't use it. So you can't always, uh, you know, accommodate this, but when you can, it's helpful. Uh, relatively inexpensive, I think. I don't remember what I paid, but you can find them at the Bee Supplies, Amazon. So if you think it'll work for you, maybe your hives are spaced more, a great, great thing to have. So with that, one more thing about the hive feeders and the inner covers or the migratory covers that I like. The migratory cover, since it doesn't have lips on the side, you can slide that cover just off to the side. Here's my frame feeder. So without exposing the whole hive, I can just slide that lid over, it's time to feed, pour my sugar syrup in, and then slide it right back closed. Great for robbing season, uh, doesn't expose the bees open to the other colonies, and just a quick in and out job adding feed. So that's another reason I do like these migratory lids, and uh, with the telescoping cover, your, your uh, lips go all the way around. So you can't slide it left or right so just something to think about when you're selecting your lids again do what do what works for you i'm not in any way saying this is the only lid to use it's just the one i chose to use okay so now i'm going to move this hive out of the way and show you all just a, a five frame nuke so what we just saw was a 10 frame this is a five frame nuke it's just uh, half the size of the other. It can hold, you know, the same frames, and it, it'll hold five frames. Uh, you can build them to your specs. You can have them hold two frames, three frames, four frames, five, six, whatever size you think works. Uh, and this is just a better for a smaller colony. It's better to start them off in a smaller box. You know, if you have two or three frames of bees don't put them in a 10 frame box, or it's preferable not to put them in a 10 frame box. Uh, the less space they have, the better they'll concentrate on what's there. So having something like a five frame just will work better for them. Once they start to fill that out, so four frames, five frames, then you can put them in the 10 frame box. And uh, back to the 10 frames, those also you can get in eight frames. My choice was 10 frame. Uh, I think you'll find that a lot of the equipment is geared towards 10 frame. You may have a harder time finding what you need for an eight frame, but if you have a bad back or you find it heavy just to lift a 10 frame, you may want to look into going eight frames. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's two less frames. The plus is, like I said, it's gonna be a lighter, lighter overall weight. The downside is you may have a hard time finding equipment. Uh, if you are into building stuff for yourself, perfect. You can make your own bottoms, you can make your own lid, you can make everything for the 10 frame, you can make for the eight frame yourself. So that's an absolute plus. If you're handy in the wood shop and you wanna go eight frames, there's nothing holding you back. Uh, so take that into consideration. Myself, I chose to do 10. I choose to do uh, five frames for nukes, uh, for mating nukes, which we can get into a whole nother topic. Those I've been doing three frames so that I can stick a feeder in. Okay, my battery died again. These GoPros go through them like crazy. But so what I was saying, I don't know where it cut off, but another alternative is uh, three frames. And I like to do three frames for mating nukes because I can, I can fill a three frame box with two frames and a feeder 
and that way I can feed them while they're building up the two frames. Once they build up the two frames, I can pull the feeder, add another frame. Now they've got three frames. Once they fill those up, now we've got a solid three frame that can easily be trans transferred into a five frame nuke, give them two additional frames or one frame and a feeder, depending on what they need. And uh, it just kind of steps them up gradually. Three frames to five frames to a 10 frame. And uh, I just find that works for me. Again, uh, use it if you think it works for you. If not, find, find what does work for you. Uh, so that's all I've got for today. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, if you found this video useful, please hit the like. Please hit the subscribe so you get any future content that I come up with. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank y'all.